The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, died nearly a year ago from pancreatic cancer. Initially, it was reported she did not have a will, but we are now learning she had three. All were handwritten. Two were locked inside a cabinet, the other found in a spiral notebook underneath a couch cushion. Joining me now is Sharon Levine of Levine and Levine Law Offices in Kalamazoo, and she's here to talk more about the importance of having a will. Thank you for being here, Sharon. We have, I have so many questions for you, but first of all, do the handwritten wills that Aretha Franklin left, will they hold up? Handwritten wills are legal in Michigan, and handwritten wills have to be dated. Okay. They have to be primarily in the handwriting of the testator or testatrix, and their signature must match a material portion of the handwritten part of the will. Okay. So in other words, it not only needs to match her, hand, her signature, but it also needs to match what she's written. And they will hold up, but we have three wills here. Yes. And so that creates another law school right. exam question. Right. And uh, it's unfortunate <laughs> that we get these examples right. from such celebrities who we wish would have done better, especially with the size and scope of this estate. So when they look at the three wills, what they'll look at, first of all, is the date of those mm -hmm. wills. And then if they'll look at closely at the provisions of those wills. So does will number one, is it completely revoked by will number two? Mm -hmm. Or are there provisions in will number two and will number three that negate parts of will one and parts of will two? And so it's going to be a real puzzle for the judges and the parties to examine it. And this will be tied up in, in, for a long time, more, more than likely in the courts. Yes. Because it's, it, the, according to what we read, those wills are, leave everything she has to family members, but it depends on what she says and what, which will. Right, exactly. Um, my question for you is, Aretha Franklin, her attorney said she originally didn't have a will. Then all of a sudden we find the three handwritten wills. Why is it so important that people have a will and how difficult is it to do a will? You know, it's not really difficult and I'm kind of of the ilk of being penny wise and pound yeah. foolish, if you will. Uh, taking the time to actually and I know this may self sound self-serving, but actually going to a lawyer who practices in estate planning is important and critical because you can draw down forms online. Sure. And I've had experience with having to go into a probate court and have those wills examined by a judge because the family members thought it was gonna be the simplest and easiest way to take care of the will but, uh, and, and express their intentions, but the language is ambiguous or the language is vague or people write in comments or wishes or intentions that are not well-defined and then the problem is, how do we interpret that? What did it really mean? And the point is that if you do go to a lawyer who writes estate plans, mm -hmm. which encompasses a variety of documents, and I can explain what those are, but the point is if you do that, the lawyer will know what it is that should be written and how to write it in a way that is well-defined and concise. And you shouldn't wait until you're in your 70s to write a will. You should have a will as soon as possible when you have assets. When you have assets, when so many people feel the urge when they have children. Yes, and children. Uh, many people feel the urge when their children are grown or they're about to retire or somebody becomes ill or they have to take care of a loved one, an elder yeah. who now they have had to mop up the mess of their parents or an aunt or uncle. And so to have a will uh, all is important, to determine whether or not a trust is relevant is important. Um, to have a power of attorney is important. To name somebody to act on your behalf if you're unable to act on your behalf during lifetime, which of course that document expires at death. Uh, it's important to have a document to express what it is that you wish to have happened if you're unable to make decisions about medical care or health care. That's a designation of patient advocate. That's what the document is in Michigan. And in Michigan now, you can even designate somebody to be your funeral representative. Hmm. That's somebody who will manage your affairs uh, for your funeral. So that it, the whole point being that you are very well defined yes. and that your family members, whether they like what you've intended or not, at least they understand and they know what to expect. There is a clear understanding. Sharon Levine, thank you so much. I know we could go on talking about this, but a lot of information and the bottom line is find an attorney who specializes in estate planning and get that done. That would be the thing to do. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much.